Tonight with a Fox Carolina investigation. Cell phones in jail cells, their problem prisons can't seem to shake. Just last week, a convicted killer in the South Carolina prison system was slapped with new charges after deputies say he used a cell phone to orchestrate a woman's killing from behind bars. The FCC won't allow cell phone jammers in prisons, but tonight we're hearing other ways they're working to stop the problem. Only on Fox, Brooklyn Cromer goes behind bars in a maximum security prison and shows us what's being done to keep cell phones out of the hands of criminals. Some officials say it's the most dangerous weapon behind bars. I'm talking about cell phones in prison, but getting them out of inmates' hands has been an uphill battle. It's a constant battle. It's actually a war that is not just a South Carolina problem, but it's a national prison problem in the United States. Kirkland and Broad River Correctional Institutions are surrounded by barbed wire fencing, separating inmates from the outside world. But officials say this can only block out so much. Folks that come to the Department of Corrections are physically incarcerated, but virtually they're out there amongst us because of their ability to use these contraband illegal cell phones to communicate with the outside world, continuing their criminal ways from behind bars. I'm going behind prison walls, getting a first hand look as the prison system fights to keep cell phones outside. Do you have any wallets, cell phone, credit cards, cash or fitted tobacco products, anything that's considered contraband by NCDC? No, ma'am. We have scanners at the front of our institutions now, so if people try to sneak contraband in either on their person or in their person, we'll be able to find it. As soon as staff and visitors walk inside, bags are placed on an x-ray conveyor belt. Then a full body scan takes place. Director Brian Sterling says they've had a significant drop in contraband since adding the new additions but it's not 100%. We are seeing a pretty good drop in the amount of contraband coming in. However, it still gets in and sometimes, you know, a drone can fly it in. Sometimes it can be put into a package that is coming into an institution. We arrest visitors quite frequently for trying to bring contraband in. Um, also, you know, it's disappointing, but sometimes staff is compromised and if staff is compromised, we will arrest them and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Sterling says they've also installed netting to prevent people from throwing contraband over the fence. But he believes the best solution is cell phone jammers, which would completely block signals inside prison walls. But a federal law currently prevents this. It makes no sense to me. It's just when I talk to people around South Carolina and around the country, they just say it's unbelievable. And it just no one can make a rational argument as to why we shouldn't be allowed to jam these cell phone signals. Nearly a dozen maximum security prisons in South Carolina now have these 50 foot nets installed around them. Now, Director Sterling tells me this is a step in the right direction, but he's still pushing for legislation that will allow cell phone jammers inside prison walls. In Columbia, Brooklyn Cromer, Fox Carolina News Tonight.